Greetings! My name is Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome back to Crimson Grey. <sighs> Last time, things were going great. Things were going fantastic, and then they weren't. <sighs> I don't like my health lately. So, recovering is just fine, and now I'm feeling that under the weather again. Yeah, well, I'll be fine. Uh, just like John, we'll be fine. We can work with this. I've gotten out of secure situations. John woke to the feeling of something tight on his wrists. At first he thought he must be tangled in the sheets, but when he tried to move his hands, they were stuck. The memories returned in a bitterly cold flood. Lily must have drugged the tea and brought him wherever this was. His blurry vision slowly returned, and he could make out a rough basement around him. He could just see a heavy metal door at the top of a set of stairs. Ah yes, that one that we saw earlier. It looked as though there were shelves and tools around the walls, but he couldn't pay attention to those. Not with Lizzie standing in front of him, eyes fixed on his face. She captivates you, does she? I'm glad you're awake now. Are you feeling okay? Okay, you... You've... I'm sorry, John. I really am. But I don't have a choice. You're so kind. Too kind. I wish you could understand how much I need you. I have to make you understand. But what are you going to do to me? Don't be afraid, John. Everything is going to be alright. I'm completely empty. There's nothing inside me. There's never been anything inside me. The emptiness craves something. I didn't understand what I needed for years and years. Eventually I realized that I needed a person. A specific person. But I didn't know who. Occasionally there would be a flicker of feeling. I'd watch someone for a while, but they were never what I needed. Nothing actually mattered. Until I met you. Lizzie, I... Hush. Let me finish. For so long, I could barely even bear to look at you. The feelings were too intense. And then I couldn't bring myself to talk to you. I was afraid it would all just... disappear. But the feelings didn't go away. They got stronger. You were made for me, John. You need to understand that. And how exactly is tra trapping me in the basement going to fix that? Uh, do that? I mean, I was already pretty on board, so... I love you. 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 I love you, you. Oh, Jesus. There's no... Oh. Damn it. No reasoning with her when she's like this, is there? Lizzie, I want you to feel that way about me, but not like this. You're not well. You don't mean that. John doesn't mean that. I... I want to be different. Be a girl you could like easily. I tried. But I'm not. I'm empty. I'll be empty until you finally fill that emptiness. Kidnapping and raping me isn't going to, going to get what you want, Lizzie. Oh, no, no, no. I would never do that to you. You were right before. It's too early for us to do that. <laughs> too early for us to sleep together. But, but just the right time to lock me in the basement. Normally that, uh, normally that sort of thing, you know, chaining me up down, uh, in your basement comes after the former. Our first time, I wanted to be perfect, perfect in every way. <sighs> then why am I tied to a chair? You're sick too, John. You don't understand how much I love you. I have to make you understand. Stay here. Try to get comfortable. You have days and days to start to understand. I'm not certain you understand any of this. Days and days. John recalled that they were going into a full week of vacation. That meant she could keep him here a full nine days before they had to return to school. That was no accident. Lizzie might be unstable, but her mind was disturbingly clear. 
She'd planned this, maybe even before asking him out on the date. His heart ached. John couldn't understand the way her mind worked, but she was obviously in great pain. In fact, the way she had spoken, it almost reminded him of his own depression. That brought to mind an old lesson, one he'd learned with the therapist before Mrs. Smythe. His depression explained his depression explained why he lashed out at those close to him, but it didn't excuse it. The people around him could choose to suffer through it voluntarily, but that was their decision. Was this something he could help Lizzie get through? Did he want to? As he looked around the basement, he saw a lot of heavy tools. Some of the hammers and knives looked as if they'd been used. John slumped against the rope, the ropes binding him to the chair, and just wept. He wasn't sure how long the release of emotion continued. When it was over, John felt as though his mind had been purged. His current situation might be pretty bad, but he still had options. He could figure out something, assuming he figured out what he even wanted to do. The sane thing to do would be to find a way to escape, contact the police, or maybe it would be safer to convince Lizzie to calm down, take more medication, not hurt him. Yes. Perhaps. I think we should. I think we should definitely try and find a way to escape. Uh, but going to the police might not be a good idea. We need to take. I don't know. Jo John! We're going to have ever so much time together. Aren't you excited? He needed to say something, turn the situation around, but it was just so hard to focus. Before I got to know you, I thought this would be the easy part. I thought I understood how people worked. Some things never made sense to me, but others are so simple. Lizzie walked up to one of the w walls and began running her fingers over the tools there. She picked up a knife and caressed the edge, partially turned away from him. I thought that once I found you, I could make you mine. And then I would feel whole. But you see, I underestimated just how much you would change me. I'm so much happier. And everything is so much more complicated. Good. Simplicity is a poison. She walked toward him, wearing a soft, loving expression, but still holding the knife. John froze and held his breath as she walked behind him. I want all of you, John. Even the parts I didn't know existed before. If I hurt you, I would never really have what I want. Great, so could you let me go then? The knife slid past his face, but only as Lizzie moved to embrace him. She wrapped her arms around his neck and pressed herself against his back, inhaling deeply. I love you so much. I wouldn't be satisfied with just a shell of you. Without warning, she pulled back. The adoration in her expression was gone, replaced with an empty gaze fixated on him. That makes this so much harder. What, what are you going to do to me? I don't know. I wish I knew. I took time to think, but it didn't help. Maybe she... Lizzie, think about this. Do you think controlling me like this will bring us together? You'll... You'll forgive me. It's more important for you to understand. But you said it yourself. You're not sure how you're going to make me understand. Shouldn't you try talking to me first? I need to think. Maybe that wouldn't work, but he hoped it stuck with her. She could reason, even if in a strange way. Maybe he could get through to her. Lizzie paced around the room for a while, muttering under her breath, then suddenly straightened. Throwing aside the knife, it embedded itself in the wall. She went to a closet, and after a few seconds of searching, emerged with a chain. Oh, fuck. Great. That certainly worked. Now she's uh, finding me even further. Ah, crap. Maybe I should have kept my mouth shut. Yes, this will be better. 
I'm sorry, John. You should have thought of this earlier. She clamped one end around his ankle, then lifted a table at one end of the room and latched the other side of the chain there. Plucking the knife out of the wall, Lizzie cut through John's bonds with troubling speed, smiling all the while. See? You don't have to be tied up. Here, use this table. I'll bring you whatever you need. Lizzie swept all the objects on the table like there was so much trash, then frowned down at the empty space. You didn't bring your books. Because of the date. Is there anything else? Is there anything you want me to bring for you? He stared at her, still not entirely sure how to deal with this change. Licking his lips, John spoke before he could fully think through his words. Can I have some water? Ah, of course. Yes, water. And you slept a long time. You'll probably be hungry soon. Just wait here. While she was gone, he did his best to just rub some feeling back into his wrists and look around the room. Okay, so our situation has at least slightly improved. Eh, uh, maybe. Then again, may uh, I mean, we have more breathing room, but the chain might be harder to actually get, uh, get out of. The chain attaching him to the table leg was fairly long. He thought he could reach most of the basement except the far end and the door at the top of the stairs. Not that he could try anything, when she was nearby and could return in any moment. He did try to lift the table though, to see if he could slip the chain out from under the leg, and couldn't even budge it. But god, she's strong. Or maybe I'm just weak. Either works. What the hell? Was there some trick to it? Or is she just that strong? Hmm. Interesting. She did. There was a whole thing where she was. When she caught us with what uh, you know, pulled us up with one arm. Alright. Yeah. John had thought it might have been his imagination, or she was just fueled by passion, but to move the table as easily as she had, that shouldn't have been possible. There wasn't time for anything else before Lizzie returned, bearing kitchen supplies. Just wait a moment. I'll make you something. And we can be together while I make it. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I mean, it would be, but the whole being locked down in your basement puts a damper on the whole situation, you know? Not waiting for an answer, she laid out her ingredients on one side of the table, then set up a chopping board. She began reducing vegetables to little chunks with terrifying ease, knife a silver blur in her hands. I know just what I want to cook today, but you can ask for whatever you want later, okay? I'll make you anything you like. Uh, thank you. This is all I want, John. A peaceful life at home. You can stay inside. Ignore everyone who wants to hurt you. I'll keep you safe. Bring you whatever you need. Take good care of you. And never go outside? Of course you could go outside if you wanted to. But right now, I'm just afraid. Her movements became more erratic, and John saw several chips of woods fly away from the cutting board. Lizzie was still smiling sweetly. Don't you want that too? To be able to just stay inside on bad days and ignore the world? We could do, we could do that without the whole bondage thing. Well, maybe a little bondage, but not this kind. I just... Uh, none of this is necessary, but... I don't, how, I don't know how to get that through to you. It's easy to say, you know? Harder to trust. It's especially when you don't even know how. <sighs> that did sound good to him, but when he shifted his legs, he heard the chain clinking along the floor, and whatever he had been meaning to say evaporated out of his mind. As absurd as it was, the day continued almost normally. Lizzie made him an elaborate meal, and they ended up chatting over it, as if everything was normal. It felt wrong to do so, but he worried that doing anything else would just antagonize her. Did she really think this would work in the end? Honestly, he had no idea. And did she really need to do so much cutting for every single dish? When they had finished and chatted for a while, Lizzie abruptly hopped back to her feet. Okay, just a moment, John. I'm going to get your books, okay? 
I don't want you to be angry with me for making you fall behind on your homework. Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ. Imagine getting kidnapped and you still need to do your fucking homework. Feels bad, man. <laughs> Is there anything else you want me to get from your house? Uh, yeah, my gun. <laughs> uh... Well, just let me know if you need anything, alright? She skipped away and he heard the door above him close. He wondered if it could be a trick somehow, but after enough silence passed, he felt reasonably certain that she had actually gone to his house. Though she could have taken his key, he saw it still resting on the far table with the other things she'd, he'd been carrying. Had he made a copy at some point, or could she just pick the lock? Neither possibility was exactly comforting, but he didn't have time for that. John got to his feet, stretched, and considered his options. But really, most house locks are actually pretty easy to pick. Uh, they, I mean, the average, uh, the average lo uh, house front door lock that people use hasn't, uh, it has uh, it hasn't been, like, significantly changed, really changed at all since fucking, I can't remember exactly how long, but it was like twice the time it, it was twice the amount of time that the Civil War ended. Uh, that's a weird way to phrase it, but you know what I mean. No, twice the amount of time since the tr Civil War, whatever. A long fucking time, over a hundred years. Yeah, John got to his feet, stretched, and considered his options. Hmm. Alright. Let's, uh, look for tools. Or we can just say you make something for Lizzie if you want to go that simp route. But no. His table had been placed to be out of reach of the weapons lining one wall, but that put him close to the other wall. John managed to get around the table to it and began examining them. There was a metal cover that appeared to be locked, but he looked through the rest. There was a toolbox that he thought was locked at first, but eventually he realized it was only stuck. After enough effort, he got it open and looked through. Most of it was random aging tools. Oh, random, a random aging tools. Although I was saying, like, age tools for aging. But he found a screwdriver that looked to be in good shape. Could he use this to escape? He saw several possibilities. But at that moment, he heard Lizzie return. It was too late. Though John spent all of Saturday 10th, Lizzie showed no signs of intending to hurt him. That night, she brought a mattress and bedding down to the basement, and set out close enough that he could lie down on it. When he woke up on Saturday, he felt strangely normal. <coughs> That's uh, preferable to the usual bazaar, perhaps. Still, uh, still tense. The situation was far from ordinary, but in a strange way he had learned to deal with it. That, that day passed almost normally. Since Lizzie had brought him his books, he, he tried to work through his homework, just as he often did on a Sunday. Lizzie stayed with him most of the day, working as well. She made meals for them both in the basement and upstairs, but she always stayed close. He hoped for a chance to evaluate his options more, but never spotted once. She was always leaning in to smile at him from the stairwell. <laughs> The only useful thing he learned was that, was that the basement door was apparently unlocked, except at night. She, if he could somehow get unchained from the table, he had a shot at getting out. Or perhaps... When Monday dawned, he crashed almost immediately and didn't even get out of bed. That was common for vacations when he didn't have friends to distract him, since all he could do was wallow in himself. It felt worse than usual. His world wasn't just grey, his depression was filled with flecks of anger and confusion. Only then did he realize he hadn't taken any medication since Friday morning. When Lizzie entered that morning, she immediately saw how badly he was doing and rushed to the mattress, at first fussing with his sheets before realizing the problem went deeper than that. John, what's wrong? Other than you keeping me here? No, I'm sorry, no. If I let you go, you'll just hate me. It will ruin everything. Maybe you shouldn't trap me down here in the first... Whatever. Then, at least bring me my paxatine. It's in the shelf above the sink to the... 
No. No, I won't bring it to you. I can't. I destroyed it. What? But I need that. You understand how serious my condition is, right? I know. I really do. But you shouldn't take their drugs. Not theirs. But... You were taking something before, Paxine, right? Tell me what it was. I'll go get some for you. I want you to get better, John. But I won't let you take anything from, anything from Koi Tech. Well, I mean, you were, uh, you were wanting to switch back to your old medication um, a few days ago, remember? And yeah, I don't blame her for being <laughs> suspicious of Koi Tech. I'm pretty, probably more suspicious of it than she is. Oh, well, maybe not. Uh, she has ever yeah, she has every reason to be. All right. What do you mean lie about old medication? Okay, sure. Thinking back, John tried to remember the medications that seemed to do some good. Maybe they weren't as good as Paxidine, but they'd be better than nothing. Okay. Just wait right here. Apparently just remembering all the chemical names he'd listed, Lizzie hopped up the stairs and practically slammed the door in her hurry on the way out. She's got a good, got a good memory then. Good memory. She's crazy strong. What is she, a fucking super, uh, super soldier or something? <laughs> well, I've heard... Uh, it's probably something to do with, like, you know, these sorts of weird genetic conditions caused by weird stuff. You know, it can lead to... Well, never mind. I'm sure you already are very aware. Abruptly alone, John realized that he had another chance to act. Look for more tools, why don't we? Using the screwdriver he had found earlier, John began to work on the metal cupboard. The lock appeared to be a simple one, and he could just wedge the screwdriver between the doors. Huh, lucky. I thought we were going to have to like... He was afraid that he'd make marks that Lizzie might notice. But the cupboard was already a battered old thing. After a lot of tedious poking at it, John was starting to worry he wouldn't accomplish anything. And then, out of nowhere, he managed to budge the latch just a little. Filled with a new energy, John kept jabbing at it, occasionally pushing it, uh, pushing it just a little further. Eventually, he managed to open the cupboard. He made a painfully loud sound, but he was fairly confident that he wasn't back yet. Now he could finally see the tools inside. His first feeling was that he had wasted his effort. Most of the tools were useless things like rakes and mops. Uh, you'd, be uh, you'd be surprised how useful a really excellent mop can be. At the very least, it's a, it can be a half decent weapon. Then again, she is a fucking uber bench. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Hey, you, uh, the rake could at least maybe get, allow you to get access to the weapons. But then he spotted it, leaning in the back. A crowbar. Yeah. It's time to live up to our family name and face full life consequences. And become a free man. It was a little uh, old, but it looked sturdy. But, the le but though the legs of the table were metal, the joints at the top weren't strong. Maybe if he struck it with the crowbar, he could bend it a little. Pardon me, I, had, I just had to go to the bathroom. And I, and I just realized, this guy's name is John, and we don't know what his last name is, which means that he could be John Freeman, who was Gordon Freeman's brother. Uh. Eh. Anyways, the idea filled him with a little hope, but he rejected trying it immediately. He had wasted too much time, and there'd be no way to hide an action like that. He needed to escape just after Lizzie left. Instead, John replaced the cupboard, uh, the crowbar, closed the cupboard, and returned to his seat, hoping the fact that it was unlocked wasn't too obvious. Eventually, Lizzie returned, bearing a large white sack. Ho ho ho! <laughs> Merry yonderi mus. He triumphantly emptied it out on the table, dumping an entire pile of pills in front of him. What? Out of their... What, not e they're not even in the j little pill bottles? They're just loose? It's a bit odd, but alright. Well, maybe they are. Also, how did you get those? I, I mean, I assume you have money, I suppose. Uh, 
She'd gotten every drug he'd mentioned, even the prescription ones. Hmm. He hated to think about the nasty consequences if, he, if she tried to give him all these at once. Uh, yeah, yeah, how did you get these? Well, I don't know, maybe she's just like a sneak thief or something, able to stealthily steal them. Or maybe she just socially engineered them somehow. I don't know. Probably not a big deal. <laughs> if she killed some people, eh, probably not anyone I knew. <laughs> But instead, Lizzie just brought him a glass of water and set it down beside the pile. Take anything you need to get better, okay? Let's just leave these here, but you can ask for more water whenever you want. Thank you. Of course, John. I'm doing all this because I want you to get better. <laughs> he felt like telling her that being held against his will wouldn't help, but her expression looked so sincere that he couldn't bring himself to say it. How had she gotten prescription medications anyway? He'd found the one that he'd been most satisfied with just before Mrs. Smythe switched him to Pextine and took his first dose. Lizzie smiled brightly, then skipped back up the stairs. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. You might trip and crack your neck open. Crack your neck open. I'm not sure if that's the right phrase. I'm glad. After, uh, <laughs> after lunch on Tuesday. Eh, Tuesday. What, an awesome, what a weird day that is. Uh, Lizzie started carrying electronics down the stairs. He blinked in confusion until she brought the t down the TV and started hooking everything together. Or at least attempting to. After a moment she sighed and looked at, looked at him sheepishly. Do you know how this works? I can try to get it figured out. <laughs> okay then. Imagine being, imagine being so useless with the, the, the technology that you have to get your kidnapped victim to do it for you. Uh, but a goon. He got up and did his best to help. She had a pretty nice VCR, leading, to one, leading him to wonder why she had it and didn't know how to put it together. It wasn't like someone else would have bought it for her. Do you not use this much? Never. I don't really watch television. Like, at all? No, of course not. The only thing she cares about watching is you, John. <laughs> she had seemed weirdly apathetic about a lot of things. Although, I'm surprised she doesn't have, like, hidden cameras that she t that, that, have, like, ta uh, that she records to tapes to watch on VCR or something. Yeah, well. But, he, but she thought, uh, he thought she just wasn't into pop culture. Yet now, something in her voice made him suspect there was something else entirely. What about music then? The only music that she cares about is, is the, the melodious sound of your voice, John. I don't listen to music. Huh, really? What about books? The only book she cares to read is the book of your... Life? I don't, I, that's kind of a stretch. Only non-fiction seems useful. The rest all feels so pointless. Uh, no, no wonder you don't know how to. No wonder you don't know the proper way to romance someone. Uh, that you're going about the courtship all wrong. You'd be surprised how useful fiction can be. Although, perhaps you wouldn't. Ah, uh, she probably would. What do you do for fun then? Hang, ar hang around John and sharpen her knives. She stared at it back at him so long. She, he was afraid she might just ignore the question. Fun? What is this fun you speak of? Well, sorry, I asked. Uh, I do enjoy a few things now, thanks to you. I spent a lot of time collecting all those knives because I thought they would be useful. But now, it's a little different. Now I can imagine myself protecting you. All the details about grips, edges, they're not just details now. They interest me. Glad I could help. So he'd given her an interest in knives. Fantastic. Anyway, I thought maybe I could enjoy a movie if I watched it with you. Is that okay? We might as well try. I've had it all put together for a while anyway. We can try it. Lizzie brought a chair and sat beside him as they watched the tape. He was grateful that she at least watched the movie instead of him. You know, when I was this guy's age, being locked down here, 
actually probably w uh, wouldn't really phase me so much as long as she brought down my com my computer. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I didn't go out much. I did out in the wilderness and all that, but you know, I'll maybe don't. It was nothing at all like how watching a film with a girl was supposed to be, according to his friends. Lizzie didn't seem remotely nervous during the scary parts, and to his surprise, she didn't seem to care about the romantic parts. Then again, he didn't think he would really want her to react that way. It definitely wouldn't feel like who she was. <laughs> yeah. Ha. You really do love her, don't you, John? Not just the idea of what she might be. That's probably for the best. To his surprise, John found himself enjoying it too. Maybe his old meds were doing their job better than he thought. When it finally ended, Lizzie gave him a small smile that he thought represented authentic satisfaction. Then she immediately turned to him. We should watch something together again. But I think I'd rather make our own movie. <laughs> His mind really flashed to make you poor together, <laughs> and he had to force the thought away. Uh, what kind of movie? I, I would like to just film you, here, working, or eating, or anything. I could watch it later. Really? Wouldn't that be boring? No, watching you could never be boring. Yeah. Oh, this is such a good idea. I'll go buy one of those video recorders and... Not to cut you off, but wouldn't that be incriminating evidence? <laughs> huh? Fuck, what was he saying? Well, too late to go back now. I mean, it's not legal to hold someone like this. And your basement looks kind of suspicious. You wouldn't want someone to find it later. Aw, oh, you care. <laughs> uh, then he embraced him cheerfully, and despite himself, John felt a flicker of joy. When she was happy, she seemed so purely happy. <laughs> You're right, of course. And I'm so glad you think about keeping me safe, even if I want to be the, uh, the other way around. John is so kind. Yeah, it's hard to argue with your assessment. <laughs> the fact that she's <laughs> like really like, you know, trying to get her to not incriminate herself. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Her, you again, you're the person you kidnapped having to keep you from doing anything stupid that would get you caught. Uh, that's funny. Maybe later we can make our own movies, okay? Okay? Uh, yeah, maybe. Why the hell had he just done that? Having a tape of her behavior would have been the perfect way to get the police to take him seriously if he managed to escape. Eh, well. <laughs> but as soon as he had that thought, John regretted it. He didn't want to see Lily hurt, and he hated the idea of her going to prison, despite what she was doing to him. Yeah. Yeah. Despite the situation, he still thought of her as a sweet girl who wasn't entirely well. She deserved help, not punishment. Yeah. Well, maybe a bit of both. But <laughs> if anyone deserves to punish her, it's me. Or you, John, rather. Was this Stockholm Syndrome? Was she wearing him down, just like she planned to? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's that. It's not that she's... It's not that the Im imprisonment is, you know, causing you to warm up to her. It's just that it's not causing her to... It's just not causing her you to be as... As cold... Uh, as, as cold to her as it's as, as cold to her as you might expect, you know. Your feelings for her haven't changed as much as perhaps they should. <laughs> the idea disturbed him, but it didn't change how he felt. He needed to find another way. Yeah. What we need to do is we need to we need to get. Uh, we we gotta do is get we gotta get out of here, take the uh, you know take the power back, if if you know what I mean, if you catch my drift. Sh uh. And then when we've got when we 
and we need to have a stern conversation with her. We need to sh we need to show her that none of this was none that none of this was necessary. That all she's done is risk uh, is risk destroying our relationship. That uh, that. Or something like that, anyways. On when, uh, on Wednesday, Lizzie wanted to watch another movie, but John suggested that might be too many. Instead, they passed the day quietly, working and chatting and ignoring the fact that he was chained to the table. He was feeling better than he thought he could without Paxatine, so his mind shifted to what he could do to improve his situation. Chatting with Lizzie was pleasant, but it wouldn't resolve their problem. But what should he say? Try to leverage the last few friendly days into her letting him go? Just try to make her relax more? Or convince her that he wouldn't leave her? Uh, so, Lizzie. Tress. Romance. Peers. Morality. That's an interesting topic. Uh, yeah. I'm interested. What are what are her general thoughts about morality? Hard to really get a grasp on it. Uh, like, I'm not... Hey, do you mind if I ask a random hypothetical question? Ask anything you want. Say a train is running down a track and it will kill five people. You could pull a lever to switch the train to another track, where it will hit only one person. Do you pull it? Oh, this old chestnut. Yeah. Who are the people on the tracks? Huh? That's not supposed to matter, it's just hypothetical. Random people, no one you know. I don't pull the lever. I would leave. He had a feeling he knew what she was going to say, but... Say I am on the first track and the train is heading toward me. If the lever would make the train hit five other people instead, would you pull it? Yes. <laughs> Makes sense. But if there were ten people? The number doesn't matter to me, John. I would kill a hundred people. A thousand. And then I would go find the person who put you on the track and, ki and kill her. And the train conductor. And everyone on the train who didn't help. Uh, okay, that's a going a bit far. But otherwise, that makes sense, you know? It just see, It's just rational to prioritize the people that you actually care about over people that you don't know. Uh... Even if there, it's a lot of people that you don't know, uh, but uh, <laughs> and killing the train conductor kind of makes sense because, well, it's probably uh, it's probably his own incompetence that led to this situation. Since and <laughs> but everyone on the train who didn't help—that's going a bit far. <laughs> what if the, what if there was nothing they could have done? If my only choice was to switch the train to come hit me, I would do it. I would do anything. That's... Good. That's comforting, I suppose? Lily, I don't want you to kill yourself for me. Oh, you're so sweet. But no, you have to survive. I want us both to be f together forever. But if I can give my life to save yours, it would be worth it. How would you answer that question if a teacher asked it? One already did, last year. I pretended to be flustered and said I couldn't pull the switch. That you do understand how most people view this. I'm aware of how they think, but I don't understand it. What they think doesn't really matter to me. But if I say the wrong things, people will interfere with my life. So I've had to learn to say the right things. <laughs> not a bad outlook on it. Not not caring about whether what other pe other people think unless it interferes with your life makes sense to me i i did that with you too john at first because i was afraid you wouldn't love the real me but you will eventually i'm sure of it lizzie i already did that that made things a little uncomfortable for the rest of the day. But John hoped that if he ever did somehow get strapped to train tracks, Lucy was the one nearby. Ha. <laughs> Indeed. 
The next morning, he took his pills with a glass of water, as usual. Lizzie waited until he was done, and then gave him a warm smile. I hope it's helping. You seem happier, John. I feel better than I expected. Pretty good, actually. It was actually strange how good he felt, and it was easier not to think about that at the moment. Instead, he brought up an issue that he'd been thinking about for a while. That reminds me, I've been meaning to ask you. You've run out of Nilazine, right? I haven't taken it for days. I destroyed the rest of it the day before our date. Yeah, I suspect as much. Well, I didn't know that you destroyed it, but I suspected you hadn't been taking it. You sort of implied such? You destroyed it? Why? It was useful. It helped me understand. But I wasn't myself while I was taking it. I wish you re you'd reconsider taking medication. We can't handle everything ourselves. Sometimes we need help. You don't understand. It's not that simple. Then explain it to me. I wasn't myself. It was like someone had imprisoned me and taken and took my place. Imagine, imagine if your own medication meant that you could never feel sad again. Just constant manic happiness. That does sound horrible. I'm sorry I made you take it. Don't say that. It was useful. Having things be different for a while made it easier to see how everything fits together. But I couldn't take that. Uh, take any longer than that. I wanted to be myself again. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Well. Not that... Not that I can really relate, so to speak. I... I've... I can't say I've ever felt like myself. I don't really have a self. Anyways. Koitek doesn't want to help people, John. They just want to control them. Are you saying- are you just saying that metaphorically, or do you actually know something about them? No. No? Abby was an addict because of them. I never cared about her, but I saw what Koitek's drugs did to her. They didn't change who she was. She was always horrible. The drugs just made her identity obvious. Not like you, John. You're still so kind. Even though you were taking that drug. But they won't be satisfied with that. Are you seriously saying Koitek is some kind of conspiracy? <laughs> well... Conspiracy? No, I don't think so. They just want money, and they're willing to cut corners to make it. Yeah, well... I don't care what they do to anyone else, but you needed to stop taking that drug. You need to see clearly. Yeah. You almost wanted to believe her. Hey, I can, I'm on... I'm on board with believing her. <laughs> Also, I, ju I just realized that that thing earlier, which was saying that she'd kill whoever put, uh, put him on the tracks, she specifically said her. Funny that. A bit revealing as to what she was thinking of. Koitek was a huge company, and those weren't exactly known for their ethics. Yeah, especially pharmaceutical companies. It was plausible that they had been testing some dangerous drug on Lizzie's mother. It had probably been too dangerous for adults, but had a magnified impact on a developing child. Did Lizzie see that on some level? Or was she just paranoid by the company? Sometimes she seems she seems so. And you should stop seeing Mrs. Smythe. She's trying to steal you away. I'm sure of it. Lizzie, don't be ridiculous. She's ten years older than me and a school counselor. Yeah, so that doesn't that doesn't rule out her being some kind of predator. You're you're too trusting. I can't trust her. You can't. You shouldn't. Calm down. No one is going to steal me away. Except for you, apparently. She stared at him if, as if she desperately wanted to believe his words. A moment later, she gave an odd little half shrug. I came in to say I need to run some errands today. So I'll have to leave you alone. Okay, John? Yeah, sure. She left the room and John knew that he had a rare opportunity. But he found himself sitting and thinking. Was it possible that she was right about the Baxedine? He hadn't taken it in several days, and after a few low points, he actually felt much better than usual. Well, yeah. You yourself were, uh, were saying something to that effect before, remember? The terrible irony of depression medication was that sometimes a drug could make you feel even worse, not better. Maybe the changes he attributed to Baxedine were just changes in his life. 
There couldn't be anything to a conspiracy theories. Are you sure about that? But he could believe that Koitek would push their drug on anyone with depression, even if it had mixed results. Things like that happened at all uh, happened all the time. And I should remind you, it hasn't been it hasn't fully cleared its fucking clinical trials yet. Abruptly resolved that it, uh, abruptly he resolved that if he made it out of the basement, he'd stop taking Paxine as an experiment. He could stay on his old meds, see if he did better. If he actually showed signs of improvement, even Mrs. Smythe would be happy to let him take older drugs. I don't know about that, but I mean, she she'd have to acquiesce if she if she doesn't want to seem overtly suspicious. Then again, maybe she does. Regardless, for now, he needed to take the stock of his options and take some kind of action while he had the opportunity and energy for it. He felt like he'd spent too much time thinking to make an escape attempt, but maybe he could accomplish something else. Weapons? I'm not so good. I mean, we can see weapons perfectly fine right on there. I don't think we need to look for them. Uh, don't try anything. Make something for Lizzie. Sure, why not? Deciding his best bet was to was to try and encourage Lizzie's good nature, John, uh, and you know dissuade any suspicion. That's funny. On that I'm planning something. John set to work in with the kitchen supplies she left nearby him. His options without a stove were limited, but he, but he did his best to make some make of something that looked like real effort had been put into it. He's no chef, but he thought he would she would like anything he'd made with his own hands. Strangely, the act of making something for her helped him forget about the fact that he was chained in her basement. The situation might be messed up, but perhaps there was a core or something salvageable. Yes, exactly. This is the situation is far from unsalvageable. We just need to make it clear to her that she. When Lizzie saw his gift, she blushed, then took it away hurriedly. John blinked, but didn't have time to object. The next time he saw her, though, she was beaming. She is captivating, isn't she? On Friday, John woke up, stretched, yawned, scratched at the shekel on his leg, and got up to brush his teeth. It was only while brushing his teeth and staring at the walls of knives that he realized how normal this, had, this bizarre situation had become. One week ago, Lizzie had been asking him out on a date and they had gone out like a normal couple. It felt like a lifetime ago. When he heard the basement door open, he didn't even glance up. He knew it would just be Lizzie again. He rinsed out his mouth and set his toothbrush aside. Good morning. Can you believe it's been a week already? I was just thinking that, actually. Hasn't it been wonderful? We've been together every single day. Ah, it's bliss. You know... <laughs> We could have been, we could have done that without the whole trapping you in the basement thing. Christ, maybe I should have trapped you in the basement. <laughs> maybe that would have gone better. You know, we haven't done anything that we couldn't have done without the kidnapping. But that's the point. It is? She skipped in past him, the wall and eyes. Lizzie held her arms behind her back as she examined them eagerly. When we were together at school, part of me was afraid that we were both pretending. Even when we were alone, I wasn't... myself. Lizzie chose one knife from the wall, pressing its edge slowly before taking it up. She turned to him, eyes unnaturally bright. God. Isn't that face just captivating? Anyways. A normal boy couldn't have done all those ordinary things with me after seeing the truth. You saying I'm not normal? And I wouldn't want you to be. <laughs> right back at you, I suppose. You're so much more beautiful. You're so beautiful when you look like that, aren't you? She came closer, knife swaying back and forth as her gaze remained fixated on him. She was close, close now, close enough that she could have kissed him or stabbed him. <laughs> or both, perhaps. Would that be such a bad thing? Maybe not. I want you to learn that you shouldn't be afraid of me. 
You know I would never pick up a knife to hurt you, right? I... I don't know about that. I... I wanted an answer. <laughs> so, that's avoiding the question, isn't it? Uh, no, honestly. I don't know that. <laughs> perhaps I'd wa perhaps I'd want you to hurt me, <laughs> even, or perhaps you might think I wanted you to. I just don't know with you, <laughs> and that's that's kind of thrilling, actually, but also dangerous. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. What? But John, I love you. Yes, but if you were convinced that your love required you to use that knife on me, you would do it. Ah, that's so sweet. What? If you were afraid of me, you would never have been so honest. But even with all my weapons right here, you didn't try to lie to me. Yeah, you know? If I, if I, if I, if I not, if I didn't trust that you would, if I didn't have some trust in you, I would have lied to you just to make you feel better and all that. Or maybe I would have just kissed you to avoid the question entirely. But yeah, <sighs> honest uh, trust is an important thing in a relationship, which is why locking me down here was a stupid idea. But never mind. Oh, John, I hope you're wrong. I would never, ever want to hurt you. But I'm so happy you said what you really think. John swallowed uncomfortably. He wasn't sure where he expected honesty to go, but this was better than expected. That's the John I love. I want you to accept me, just like that. And you do, even if you're still worried. She wrapped her arms around his neck, still carrying the knife, and kissed him briefly on the forehead. After that, she lowered her face to his, hesitating for a moment, but in the end pulled back without kissing him on the lips. Oh, you have no idea how much I want to do right now. <laughs> you have no idea how much the feeling is mutual. But I'll wait. I'll wait until you trust me. Do you trust me enough to let me go? Soon, darling. Soon. On Saturday, Lizzie announced that she wanted to make a huge meal for both of them on the last day. She asked what he wanted to eat, then headed out for a shopping trip. As soon as he was sure she was actually gone, John got up and took a deep breath. He didn't have much time before the vacation was over, but what did he want to do? Right. This might- this is probably our last chance. Let's do it. John carefully retrieved the crowbar, then stood by the table for a while, just trying to motivate himself to act enough to actually do it. Eventually, he decided he didn't have a choice. I mean, we always have a choice. He couldn't come back this far and back down. He took a deep breath, pulled back, and swung. His first blow glanced off uselessly. And he nearly gave up then, but he forced himself to try again. This time, the table creaked. Blow after blow, he slowly bent the table leg inward. He made a horrible noise, but that just motivated him to hit harder. There was no hope of going back now. At last, the table leg stuck inward at an awkward angle. John dropped the crowbar, catching his breath. He knew he should check if it was enough, but now he almost didn't want to. Eventually, he bent down and tugged at the shackle attached to the table leg. With enough tugging, he managed to pull it off. And then he was free. Maybe. Suddenly unable to deal with the uncertainty, John grabbed the loose chain so he wouldn't trip over it and rushed for the stairs. Yes, the door was unlocked. He stepped out into the hallway and took a deep breath. Lizzie might have locked the front door, but he could always break a window if necessary. But now that he had gotten this far, John hesitated. What now? He could escape. But to where? 
But to what end? Or we could stay in the basement. To what end, though? Let's think about this carefully. What? Why did we even try and escape in the... It, why did we even escape our bonds in the first place? Was it to escape her? No, not exactly. Because I do still want to be with her. Even, uh... It's... it's but not like this. I don't want her... I don't... Uh, I don't want her ha constantly feeling like she needs to take control of me. I don't want her- I don't want this to be a imbalanced relationship. I want her to feel like she- I want her to- I want her to realize that all she's doing is jeopardizing her relationship. That she doesn't need to, f to be so insecure about giving me trust. But rather, in, but rather, she should be concerned about n the opposite. So yeah, I'm going to stay in the basement and have a stern talk. Uh, have a have a very stern word with her. I'm going to lay out all of this. I'm going to lay out every uh, this, this, and if she, uh, and if worse comes to worst, well, at least I've got all these knives. And a chain. Perhaps I can trap her in the basement and see how she feels like. <laughs> uh, nah. John set the screwdriver and crowbar on the table, then repositioned his chair directly in the center of the basement. When he heard Lizzie enter, he sat down facing the door, making the unhooked shackle obvious. Lizzie came down the stairs not long after, a smile on her face, and then she saw him. And her expression became utterly blank. Hello, Lizzie. Oh, hello, Lizzie. Victoria's right out of my mouth. <laughs> you stayed. Yep. I, I didn't have to do this. This, this is all. My, this is my fault. <laughs> yep. You get, you, yeah, you get it. I don't even have to say anything, do I? You're sm you're a smart girl. Lizzie, calm down. Please don't get upset. But, but I kidnapped you, and, and. She was stumbling toward him, and he tensed when she reached behind her, when, when she reached behind her. But after pulling her knife from her waistband, she set it down on the table. <laughs> I almost ruined the only thing I had! Yep. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. The pain in her words was heartbreaking. Lizzie began to crumple, bending over with her back arched painfully. He moved to wrap her arms around her, keeping her, uh, keep her from curling against herself. Why? Why are you so kind? Lizzie, I don't want, you to, want to hurt you either. Please calm down. Why did you stay? Why? Because I trust you, Lizzie. And I would like to trust you more. You don't have to do anything like this. I won't leave you. I... I just want to be happy. Smile sweetly and say I love you and do love and I do love you with everything but I am but there's so much of everything. It's okay, okay Lizzie. It's not what you feel. <laughs> I can't believe you stayed. I can't believe you're holding me. <laughs> Still in his arms. Lizzie unleashed peal after peal of insane laughter. There was an unearthly quality to it that made his skin crawl, but John just held on to her tighter and closed his eyes. Eventually, the laughter faded and she was still there. 
The tension in her body had dissipated, leaving her resting against him. When she looked up into his eyes, there was a sweet love there, and also an intensity. He had never seen both of them in her eye, in her at the same time, and it made him shiver involuntarily, but not necessarily in fear. John loves me. Yes, I do. I won't leave you. I never thought it could be like this. This, this is who I am. I thought I would calm down if you loved me, but now I feel so alive. I don't know what to do with these feelings. That's okay, Lizzie. I'll stay with you and we can figure it out together. Then, please kiss me, John. He bent and kissed her gently. She kissed him back. Gently at first, but then almost viciously. He tasted blood in their kiss and wasn't sure whose it was, but didn't pull away. The kiss was wild and unhinged, utterly unli unlike any of his fumbling romances of the past. Lizzie's fingers dug into his back, and she kissed until she had to pull back, gasping for breath. Thank you. Thank you. Her eyes had softened again. He knew that the intensity was still looking underneath the piece he saw on the surface, but it no longer frightened him. He felt like he should say something, but couldn't find the words. After a moment, he realized that Lizzie had fallen asleep. After a moment of uncertainty, he decided to carry Lizzie up the stairs. She was so much lighter than he expected, and he didn't have a hard time taking her to her bed and tucking her in. Lying there, he, she looked almost angelic. He knew she was, uh, he knew she wasn't, and honestly, he didn't want her to be. John realized that he had stopped, uh, stepped over a line, and there was no going back. For now, though, he felt emotionally wrung out. He went to the couch and fell asleep almost immediately. Good morning, John. She was right there, watching him when he woke up. He gave her a soft smile. Good morning, Lizzie. There's one more day before our vacation is over. Would you like to do something? Well, I think we spent more than enough time, enough time in here. <laughs> Quite so. Do you want to go out somewhere? Yes. Yes, I would like that. And possibly, after all that, their date went completely normal. Lizzie seemed more relaxed than he had ever seen her enjoying herself whether they were walking or eating or just sitting on the bus. She cast him frequent glances, but though they held an intense devotion, the desperate edge he had seen there was gone. After so long in the basement, he was glad to stretch his legs and feel the sunlight. It seemed insane that all that had really happened, but for now, he felt too much of a cathartic rush to feel any concern. When the day was finally over, they returned to her house. She didn't invite him in. Instead, they just lingered at the edge of the property. John, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. We can talk about it later. Then, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Yeah, see you then. He watched her go, then turned around and walked back to the bus to stop alone. The entire ride back, he tried to think about his experiences, but couldn't even begin to grasp everything that had happened. When John got home, he found the door undamaged. The entire house didn't look so different, as if it hadn't been abandoned for nine days. There was only a single message on the answering machine, his father saying that he was going on a company vacation. He hadn't even noticed that John was gone, nor of his friends had called. He had been taken out of the world and no one had even noticed. The only person who had cared was Lizzie, but she wasn't there with him now, and there were still too many emotions to sort through with her. John sat down on the couch and simply felt numb. He fell asleep there, and an uncertain amount of time later, he slept and did not dream. Alright! <sighs> well then. So, yeah. <sighs> God. But so this seemed like a good place to stop. Oh man. All the other episodes ended 
rather soberingly, but this... Oh, this is, this is such a relief. Everything worked out for the best. No, things didn't work out for the best. I, I made them work out for the best. It'll all be, it'll be better now. And our, our mental issues, of course, aren't gone. They'll never leave, really. Not entirely. She will still have that vicious edge to, to enter her wild and manic. And I'll still have, and I'll still have this numbness to me. John will still have this numbness to him. But the desperate and uncertain t tinge to them is gone, for now at least. You don't have to be so insecure anymore. We can just be us. And that's all we need to be. <sighs> well, yeah. I don't, I don't know how much left of the game there is. Uh, it might be that the game ends very short, uh, quite shortly, <laughs> and the next episode will be a very short one, just detailing the epilogue and all that. Uh, I mean, I really felt like the emotional climax of the story. You know, I'm not certain where the where else they could take this. But, if they do, but, but I'm along for the ride regardless. Well, until then, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. Fuck you all so much for watching, and so long, suckers. You're gonna be okay, kid.